Well, Carlos, can you believe it's been five years since the last Mission Impossible movie? I can't believe that, Sarah. I know, I know. Uh, it has been a long wait, but the seventh film in the franchise, Dead Reckoning Part 1, is about to hit mm. the big screen. Tom Cruise is in Australia right now. Morning, Tommy. Hey, Tom. They have the big Sydney premiere tonight, so we figure there's no better time than now to celebrate all things Mission Jim. Impossible. For just shy of 30 years, Tom Cruise has been Ethan Hunt, a highly skilled field agent for the secret government agency Impossible Missions Force. We're being ambushed. Abort. That's an order. When we first met him, he was on the run, working to uncover a traitor who had him framed for murder. Find something that's personally important to him and you squeeze. With a global hit on his hands, there was only one thing Tom could do next. A sequel. And why stop at just two films? Since then, we've seen Mission Impossible 3, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Mission Impossible Fallout. We couldn't get enough. From six films came box office earnings of 5.3 billion Aussie dollars. Now we're gearing up to see Ethan Hunt once again in Dead Reckoning Part 1. If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. Expect all the action, thrills and spills turned up to 11. And we're constantly pushing it to that next level, not just with stunts, but story. How can we, with the resources that we have, give a, give a, a, a better experience or immersive experience for an audience? So those things, it, and it's just like I'm going, I'm not going to try to compete, but all the things that I've learned in terms of character development, um, story structure, how to, you know, filming. You know, we're all, I'm always challenging myself on a daily basis and my crew. And from my knowledge of audiences, global audiences, how can I tell the story in the same manner but engage a broader audience as best I can? Originally set to be released in 2021, the film suffered multiple setbacks during the pandemic. But this film is worth the wait. It'll also feature the biggest stunt in cinematic history. John and I are jumping out of the helicopter. He's going to chase me. That's what we say to each other. Don't be careful. Be confident. Be confident. The only things you really have to avoid while doing a stunt like this is uh, serious injury or death. Three, two, one. want to know what was going through Tom's head in the seconds before the action was called, well, this is it. Look, I've spent years preparing for this. So when I was on the ramp, I was thinking, we're going to see how this goes. As that, as that helicopter's going across, he, we had to be in sync because he could have blown me off that ramp. The rhythms of everything we had to do and everything we trained, now's the moment where I'm going off the cliff. And, and I'm thinking of performance. If you're scratching your head thinking, why on earth does Tom continually put his body on the line? The answer is pretty simple. I work seven days a week yeah. and I'm producing, so it's it's just a, you know, and everything else that we were dealing with during this time period. It was, you know, but I, I enjoy the, I have to say, I enjoy the pressure. I do enjoy the challenge. But I realize, like, I woke up and I, you know, I, I enjoy this. I like putting myself through in, in these kinds of situations. <laughs> it just gets the adrenaline pumping. Yeah, it's provocative. It's provocative. Give the people what they want. <laughs> uh, tonight in Sydney, Tom will be on the red carpet and we'll bring you all the action from the premiere tomorrow. He's a legend. He is. Well, birthday boy Tom Cruise is the biggest movie star on the planet and his recent box office smash Top Gun Maverick is credited with getting post-pandemic audiences back into cinemas. I caught up with some of the team yesterday to see what fans can look forward to in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Ethan, this mission of yours is going to cost you. Welcome to Australia. There's no chance of you forgetting where you are, right? I know, view, right? it's beautiful, right? It was a great call to take for the first Mission Impossible film, wasn't it? Probably the most significant phone call of my entire life, other than I'm pregnant. 
No, I did not meet my wife. No, yeah, of course. Yeah. You've been front and centre. You've had a front row seat to watch this franchise unfold. How, how would you describe that process? It's been a real, I mean, a genuine journey, you know, from, from going, like, a, being a little cameo role to then becoming part of the team and then that character growing and, and, and you know, the new people coming on board, seeing all that happen. It's been extraordinary, you know. I've, I'm, I feel so lucky, genuinely. You've no idea the power I represent. It knows your story and how it ends. You and Tom don't exactly work side by side all the time. You know, you're probably in a soundstage in London when he's jumping off a cliff somewhere. Right? <laughs> Not true, actually. No. We're always together. <laughs> we were there. We were there yeah. for the cliff jump, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of the time, two sides of a conversation, like when I'm sending, when, Eth when Benji's sending Ethan up that cliff, I'll be off camera feeding him his lines, you know, before he does his crazy stuff. And we were all there to watch him do the cliff jump just Yeah, because... we were there just like listening to them do the scene yeah. and then see Tom do the Waiting the at home would have been jump. too <laughs> nerve-wracking. He has a work ethic like no other. There's no one else like him. I mean, he genuinely has the most, you know, 100% commitment all the time to everything he does. And it's hard not to get swept up in that. You feel a bit left behind if you can't you can't come to work and half ass it with Tom because Yeah, you have to step up your game for sure. Yeah. His fate is written. Shall we write yours too? If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. That is written. So the second film, I mean, we can only imagine what we're going to see and hear and do and yeah. witness. I mean, the, the, do you reckon these guys just sit around going, what if we did the, what if we, they probably do, right? That's exactly what they do. Every time it's like, you know, when we get to the end of a film, I always get asked, what are you going to do now? How can you top that? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. And they seem to be able to do it. They sit and they talk and they, Tom says, oh, I really want to do this. And McHugh says, okay, we'll figure out how to do it. And then off they go. Ethan. What's your objective? What's your ultimate objective? Wow. <laughs> huh? It's quite something, huh? It's quite a runaway train of a movie. It's, well, yes, there you go. <laughs> and you've sort of flirted with being part of this world for some time, but mm. that was a good phone call to get when they said, come on down. It really was. It was, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I was doing a play in London and Chris McQuarrie came to see it and said, I want to I wanna find something. I don't know what it is, but I want to work with you. And so here we are 10 years later. And they had said in the screen test, we're looking for someone who likes the process and would thrive creatively in an environment like this. And then we'll create the character with them rather than having someone, someone having to fit a character they'd already created. So it felt very collaborative. Your life will always matter more to me than my own. Tell me about working with biggest movie star on the planet. Oh, and also the most humble. Well, he's... he knows he's good. Yeah, but he, it's more because he want, he enjoys it and he loves mm. it. I don't think he's someone who... He's not bragging, but he's, you know, he's at the top of his game. Yeah, I think he's, and I, and I think that's partly because he lives sort of outside of his own head. He's not really, my experience of him is he's not one for lots of self-analysis and self-reflection. He is engaged in the world outside. And I think that mm. is one of the reasons why he's such an accomplished stuntman and an athlete too, and why he can be safe in what he's doing, because he's always looking for what he needs to learn, what he needs to do next in order to get to where he wants this movie to get to. There are some great bits. I mean, obviously, we've all seen the cliff jump and all that, but you and he fanging around Rome in a little yellow <laughs> Fiat 500 <laughs> with your handcuffs yeah. to, to each other. <laughs> that will live with you forever, right? I mean, of, you know, of all things, <laughs> Ethan Hunt is undermined by a Fiat 500. <laughs> That's his Achilles heel. <laughs> if they'd only knew that earlier. None of our lives can matter more than this mission. I don't accept that. You've already done so much. You're having a great career. But what sense do you have that this is a pivotal moment, this franchise, this film, this project in your career and your life? Oh, that's a lov lovely question. I think you know, to be able to do something with a global platform like this, with a franchise and, a, and an actor of this caliber like Tom, but I've got 17 years of experience behind me, so I know what my work ethic is and I know why I'm doing it. Mm. And I know that I'll continue to do it if I'm lucky enough. But yeah, but I, I hope that is the case, you know, so I think it's just 
hoping that, you know, just more opportunities will come along with... I'm sure they will. We'll see you at the premiere. I hope you've got a discount on that jacket. It's very... <laughs> it's fashion, darling. <laughs> oh, come sorry. on, you should know a thing or two about that. I should, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I don't. <laughs> I know, know. I look away now. Was that a dodgy yeah. dad joke? It was Dickie? a dad joke, yeah. What was wrong with the jacket? Well, it just, it was just sort of frayed in. It's you know, it was, fashion, it was darling. It's fashion. She's lovely, Hayley Atwell, and She's we'll be great. catching up with Tom and the team tonight on the red carpet at Darling Harbour in Sydney, Mission Impossible. So you're going to get a chat with yeah, the big guy? Yeah, with the, yeah, they're all coming down How there tonight. How exciting. It's a big turnout. Two yeah. and a half thousand people are going to go to this, wow. the, the thing. The fans will be out from three o'clock this afternoon. And Tom will be there celebrating his birthday. Wanted, I can't wait to that? see it all on the show tomorrow. Dead Reckoning Part 1 in cinemas Quite on Quite the Saturday. birthday party, isn't it? It certainly <laughs> is. Well, Sydney's waking up with an extra touch of Hollywood today. Movie megastar Tom Cruise gracing our shores ahead of the premiere of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Today, correspondent Lara Vella has the very tough job of have, being on cruise watch for us this morning. <laughs> Lara, any sign of the megastar? <laughs> Brooke, I think that's really going to be the mission impossible for me this morning, trying to eyeball none other than Tom Cruise, because as you'd expect, every move he makes here today, he's going to be surrounded by private security. But who cares, because today we are celebrating the fact that the big dog of the silver screen, Hollywood megastar Tom Cruise, touched down in Sydney over the weekend. He flew here via private jet. Of course, as you say, to celebrate the fact that we've got the premiere of the latest instalment in the Mission Impossible series, Dead Reckoning, premiering, premiering here tonight. It's said, Brooke, to have some of the most, most death-defying and spectacular stunts in cinematic history. And as you would expect, well, Tom Cruise has been doing all of his own stunts. So yesterday we saw him just around the corner from here at a place called Campbell's Cove, posing alongside some of his co-stars and Sydney's Harbour looking absolutely spectacular too. And among the throngs of fans that were there to greet him were, of course, plenty of cameras and also journalists, including the big dog of the small screen, our very own Mike Dalton, who proved once and for all not even a Hollywood megastar can take the spotlight away from him. Hi, Mike, Tom. That's the way. What's going on your mic? It's on you. You see me quite angry. <laughs> So the film tonight, Brooke, it premieres at the ICC in Darling Harbour. And by coincidence, today is also Tom Cruise's birthday. He is officially turning 61 years young today, which is remarkable because he, he seems to never age, does he? <laughs> he looks <laughs> absolutely incredible. And a happy birthday to you, Tom, because we that? know that he is a big fan of the Today Show. Of course. You, you know, Every morning. Yeah, good morning to you, Tommy. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, too, um, mm. this is back in the day, before he even married uh, Al Nicole, um, he was he was chasing under the radar. He was chasing Naomi Watts. Oh, right? really? Um, so he got the wrong Aussie. Yeah, and so th this is what happened back then. Okay, folks, here we go. We're going to dial the winner of our Dinner with Tom Cruise competition. Hello. Hello, Julie Rankin. Yeah. Nice work, Julie. You've scored a Dinner with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yes, a stretch limousine will take you to a top city restaurant, then a romantic dinner, just you and Tom. When? Tonight. Tonight? I'm sorry, I can't. What? Mum's, Mum's doing a lamb roast. Oh, great, yeah. Um... I hope you realise I gave up dinner with Tom Cruise for this. Never mind, love. You can go out with him any night. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that takes you back. So oh, close to being real, too. Yeah. <laughs> Alex had said that before. So Sarah and I didn't get the reference. No, I know. Oh, so we are grateful yeah, for that. Like, it's a generational it's thing. The shoulder pads as well. It's a good, oh, it's a good yeah. excuse, oh, isn't it? The lamb wow. roast. And a beautiful, very well cooked lamb roast. She went on to too. do Tank Girl yeah, after perfect. that. Tank Girl, yeah. yeah. It's a terrific Naomi. Film. <laughs> good old Naomi, what's that? Well done. A few others that she did too. A couple of others. Hey there, today fans. Sarah and. What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?